Hi everybody and welcome back to another video. My name is Lori. I'm so happy that you're here today. I have a really fun unboxing for you. I've just been, you know, placing the occasional order over the past couple of weeks and I have some fun things that I want to share with you. I got a Pelican M800. Oh, it's so beautiful. I've been waiting for so long to order this and I finally did. I also got some beautiful cases sent to me from the folks over at Penn Trendy House and they're so beautiful. So I hope you'll enjoy this video. And also, I don't want to forget this, my Sterling Ink order came in finally. I did a pre-order months ago. Then I was in Japan and I bought all of my Hobonichi planners and notebooks while I was out there. So I was just waiting for Sterling Inks to come in because that's going to take the place of my A5 Hobonichi cousin in 2024. I'm just going to give an overview and show you a couple of the things that I'll be switching up in the new year, but then I'll have a fully dedicated planner video coming out in a few weeks. Let me know in the comments if there's anything new that arrived on your front doorstep this week. Let's jump over to the other screen and see what I got for today. So I have received a few things in the mail that I just wanted to share with you. Um, I did get my pre-order from Sterling Inc. that I'm super excited to share with you. I have some cases that I'm going to share with you that were sent to me from Pen Trendy House that I absolutely love. And most importantly, I want to talk to you about my new brown black Pelican M800 that I am so excited about. Um, I have been eyeing this beauty for a while. This is no longer in production. I believe this was a 2019 version. This is not the tortoise shell, so this is not transparent in the body here, but this is something I've looked at for a while. Despite having what I feel is a beautiful fountain pen collection, I did not have one of the flagship pens from Pelican. I was gifted the Golden Barrel at the Orlando Pen Show, and I love that so much. And it really just made me want this pen more. I ended up getting this on eBay because it is no longer available at most of the retailers I like to support. And it has this bi-colored nib that is just so beautiful. And I'm just so excited about this. We will do a writing sample in a little while because I also wanna show you how this pen fits in my new pen cases. This is a piston filler and it is such a smooth piston fill. It is so nice. Um, and in here, I will show you the ink that I have. In here is an ink from Tachia. And I purchased this when I was at Itoya in Japan. I believe this is available in the States. I just really loved this color. So we will go over a little pen demonstration a little bit later. I'm thrilled about this. I love the way it writes. I'm happy that I got the fine nib. Oh, also, I am always showing you pens in this pen rest, but I've never really given a lot of attention to who made this for me. This was sent to me by the folks over at Fountain Pendulum. I was able to pick the finish that I wanted. I got, I think this is like a walnut finish and it's so pretty. And it's a little, got a little bit of dust on here, but there's even this really soft, velvety smooth base so that it doesn't scratch my desktop. So I love this. I love that it's long. It's also large enough to fit my Kakimori um, dip pen. You probably have seen this already, but I've never really talked about it. So they are on Instagram and it was so nice of them to send this to me. I believe they also make a pen rest that has a section for sample inks. So we'll talk quickly about my Sterling ink order. I ordered this such a long time ago and I've put so much thought into what I'm going to do for 2024. I am still working on my plan, but this was one change that I knew I wanted to make. So I will definitely have a full walkthrough of my planner lineup. And this is actually what I've been waiting for. And oh my goodness, tell me how nice this lined up that I got my brown planner the same week with the gold trim and I have the gold foil. Oh, this this makes a girl very happy. And to be quite honest, there came a time where I was like, did I did I get the brown planner? Did I go for the blue? I couldn't even remember. But this is Sterling Ink in um, B 
size. I've never worked in a B6 planner. This is an A5 notebook from Archer and Olive. I've been just writing some quotes in here. This is an old notebook that I have recycled. Catherine has um, wider pages than the Hobonichi. I think the biggest adjustment I'm going to have to make, but I think I'm going to end up really enjoying it, is that her back pages where I will do my daily sheets are numbered here from page one to page so that we can 369 one page for every day of the year and then we'll have a couple extra but there is no date up here so I'm going to have to write those in on my own which will be an adjustment for me I think the vertical layout is going to be great Catherine moved her numbers to where um, the line is to give you more space in the grid. I like that all of the pages are light. There's no colors competing um, like in the Hobonichi. You can do quarterly planning with this. Um, I just absolutely love her style. So I'm very excited to jump into this, um, but I'll show you what I mean about the pages in the back here. Hold on. Again, I will definitely get into more detail about this later, but see how these have the dates, December 8th, Friday, but then, you know, this month is like a reddish color. My morning pages go in my notebook and that's kind of what the day is going to look like. And then I usually do my reflections in my Hobonichi cousin. So another change with Catherine's book is that I plan on only doing my journaling here and then kind of doing my work-life balance or this is more or less my to-do list in a day. I'm going to put that someplace else. So probably going to use the weeks section to do my to-do list. And I've recently been practicing in my cousin, this new system where I draw a gray line and then do my to-do list on the bottom half. Because what I was finding with this notebook is that I was wasting a lot of space to do one thing like Rocco's dentist appointment or a reel for one of my sponsors on my other page, um, surprise party. Like I didn't need all this space. I found that my weeks were going kind of unused. This was a week we were on vacation. I wasn't really utilizing it. So what I tried to do is keep all of my plans up here and basically ignore this number, which in Catherine's planner is very easy to ignore that little, this is a time during the day. The other thing that I like about Catherine's is it's not in military time. So, you know, over here, it's all military time, which is not the biggest deal. But anyway, I will keep my plans for the day above here. And then I kind of have a weekly outlook on the left hand side. But I've been enjoying writing how things are going to look down here. So this is a system that I would like to carry over this week. I was pretty active doing my to do list here. And then that way I don't have to do my work life balance over here. And then I can just use my daily pages as more of a reflection. That is my plan. We'll get into that in more detail um, when I actually do a couple of layouts. I'm very excited for my Sterling Ink stuff. And she also sent a couple freebies. This is really pretty. And then this little one with her website. Thank you for your order. So nice. The other thing that I got from Catherine is this planner, this little one. Um, the common planner for, this is the compact version because I liked the horizontal planning in here. I had gotten this from Traveler's Notebook last year. This is the half year, this is July to December. And I just want this to be an everyday carry in my purse. So I don't know how aesthetic this notebook will be, but it at least has month at a glance. Um, and then it has some quarterly planning. It has, you know, if I have important dates or anything that I want to track, I can put all of my goals. I mean, she basically made this a mini version, but the compact has about half the pages. So this has 121 pages instead of the 369 that the larger book has. But this is just going to go, it may not be in this passport. I have a couple passport TNs, um, but I just thought that would be a nice catch-all for the entire year. And then I feel like I won't be so tempted to buy a bunch of inserts for my travelers. And this can just be something that goes with me everywhere. So again, we'll do more with the 
decorative part of that as I get closer to the new year. All right, I'm so excited to talk about these beautiful pen cases that were sent to me from Pen Trendy House. When I first was contacted by the company, they asked me what I might be interested in. So I shared with them three different colors of leather that I loved. And I purposely went outside of brown and black and the traditional colors that I usually choose. To my surprise, they actually sent me one of each color, which I thought was so incredibly generous. So I'm going to start with these smaller cases. Um, these are the pen pouch S with the zipper. So this is the superior finish. The retail on these beautiful pieces is 70 US dollars. If you use my code, which I will leave below, you will save 10%. I thought that was really nice that they sent me a code for this. The leather on this is so nice and shiny and beautiful. So I was thinking of the holidays and I thought that this burgundy red would be just gorgeous. So the zipper extends on the side here. And the really nice thing about these cases, oh, besides the gorgeous soft leather inside, this almost feels like a micro suede. Um, I also love that the inside of the holes for the pen um, are soft. Like if you get in there, you can feel the softness inside. One of the cool things about these pen cases is that they were designed for the zippers to flip up. So you don't have to worry about your pens getting scratched by the zipper. And the zipper is just such beautiful quality as well. But you can see like if you squeeze it flat, you can see how the fabric kind of stretches out. So it's so beautiful. I love that they have just like a classy, simple logo. That is so beautiful. Um, so since we were just talking about my Pelican, I can slide this right in here. And you have plenty of space above and below. Now this one is one size up and it's a little bit taller as you can see. So I will show you what can fit in there. But certainly the Pelican is a very large size pen. Um, I also found when I was working, in, if I didn't wanna push from the top, you know, and avoid the zipper, even though it does push out, I would go from the bottom. And then that actually is really simple too and just kind of alternate my pens. So this is a Narwhal Nautilus, which is a very large pen. And then my Elmo, so either way you do it, your pen will be protected. Even the, the wide uh, Monte Grappa Elmo fits in there so nicely. And this is so soft over here. So you zip it up and there are no issues whatsoever. So the other color that I chose in the superior finish is the olive, which I think is really cool as well. I just think it's so much fun to play with color. And I have a lot of pen cases and depending on my mood, you know, sometimes I'll want one over the other. This is the same system that I just shared with you except this um, fabric is black so I love that they take care to complement the fabric with the piece so this is a brown color this is a black and it's really beautiful so same interior same smoothness inside that flexible zipper just gorgeous so these are both their three pen cases. And if you want to get the deluxe finish, which is more of a matte finish, this would be 15 additional dollars on this style. So the matte finish in the deluxe leather is $15 more. So this is the burgundy and the olive. I think they are just so beautiful. It's always fun to find pens that will look nice inside a case. I think these two pens look incredible in here because you can see the olive here and this has the olive on the finial. This is a case that I might choose if I were heading out with these pens. You can see how that olive looks so beautiful there and it just slides right in so nicely. This is a tighter clip, so even the tight clips. And this one, I might go in from here. Isn't that color combination so pretty? I just love it. What would we do for our last pen? Let's see. Maybe I would just do my Noble S, even though this is a very um, thin pen, it still is in there pretty sturdy given the amount of space that it has. And I just think that is such 
a gorgeous complement to this beautiful olive. So this size right here is the Pen Pouch M. Even though it's designed for three pens, it gives you optimal space, so you can actually add pens to both sides. So I think this one gives you a lot of bang for your buck, and I love this matte finish. I actually already loaded this up with some pens because I wanted to show you how nicely everything fits in here. So this one has like a grayish micro suede interior. When I tell you the attention to details here are so impressive to me. So when I go to close this, you can see that at no point will pens from this side touch this side. The length of the leather here is much longer than the size here. But I think that was by design so that when you close the pen case, the pens don't ever touch. So you're, the bottom of your pens are touching this soft fabric. These pens that are exposed here are touching the leather and the same at the top. So they paid such close attention to details and I really appreciate that. This one has the black trim on the outside. So even though it seems like kind of chonky here, because the zipper is so flexible, it goes right around with ease. So you can see that the width is a little thicker on this larger size. And again, this is the matte finish, which I think is just so beautiful. But in here, I have my Leonardo Momento Zero Grande, which is a really big pen, my Esterbrook SD Raven, which is a larger size SD. And then on this side, I have my custom, my Pilot Custom A23, my vintage pen, and my little pocket um, sailor pen. Okay, so this is the pen that I had envisioned looking so beautiful here. The Esterbrook Nouveau Blue, so pretty or Blue Nouveau, and again, it slides right in there. The zippers are not in the way because they lie flat. And maybe you just want to do like a little platinum preppy or something a little, you know, smaller over here. You can really fit so many. So again, we have the chonkiness there, but then it zips around, no problem. I also think if you wanted to, instead of pens being over here, so maybe I want to put some of the paper products that I got from Sterling Ink in here. You can also do it like this. It definitely makes it a little bit thinner. You can keep your three pens, but I do think that this case gives you so much versatility. So here is the lineup side by side. These are the superior finish with that really high gloss, that's beautiful. And this is the matte finish. This is called the Deluxe. And remember, if you use code Time with Tata, 10 off, you'll receive 10% off your purchase. Let me know if you've ever tried these pen cases. They're so beautiful and I'm so happy to share them with you. Okay, and just to finish things off, I wanted to do a little writing sample with my new Pelican. So let me just zoom in here. And just for a size comparison, because I forgot to do one, this is my Pilot 823, Custom 823. Pretty similar in size there. Here's an Esterbrook SD. We'll do this on this side. This does have the flat, flatter top, so these both have that cigar shape. This is the Yoseka Home Pen. This is a Sailor Pro Gear, not a Pro Gear Slim. So I think width-wise, that's kind of similar. And the one thing that I did want to point out here is that this has a much shorter grip section than some of my other pens. We're rolling around here. Am I making a liar out of myself? All these grip se sections look very similar. <laughs> Maybe it was my Leonardo. Yeah, that's a much bigger grip section there. That's a big difference if you're just looking at the section. And this has been a personal favorite. Um, and there is the um, Mont Blanc 149. So there, there they all are in the lineup. Maybe it's not as short as I thought it was. It's definitely a little bit shorter if you line it up by the threads. I thought that would be helpful for comparison. So you can definitely post this, um, but I have not been posting it, mostly because I'm afraid to scratch it. I've been posting less and less, but it's not too, too heavy. It's a little back heavy.
This size is very comfortable to me without the cap on it. And I would say that this cap does have some weight to it. There's a little Pelican, which is so cute. This is definitely not going to be my last Pelican. It's so beautiful. I love the nib. I love bicolored nibs. This is a fine nib, which is so much more broad than the average. This is a Sailor Pro Gear Slim. This is the, is this the Autumn Moon? Uh, this was my first 14 karat gold nib. This is a medium fine nib, but I will show you the difference. So if I did these. This is a fine, medium fine. And then I can even show you like a broad nib. This is the golden barrel that was given to me by my friend Olga, and this is a broad nib, so you can see the difference. And this is the only other pelican I have. You can see the difference. That's very juicy. So there it is. I love it, love it. It's so nice to catch up with everybody. What should my next Pelican be? Another M800 or an M600, that red one that's coming out? Do I go for the M1000 or do I go for a different brand? There's always something on the wish list, right? It's so funny, the variation in nib size from brand to brand. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more from my channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'm also curious what your plans are for Fountain Pen Day, Friday, November 3rd. What is on your wish list? Do you have things ready to go? I've been eyeing all the sales. I'm trying to keep track of everything and I'm just so excited for it. Before I go, I just wanted to showcase the ink here for you. This is a really deep color. You can see how it lightens up. It's really beautiful. I have a thing for brown ink. Okay, now I'm really saying goodbye. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video. Happy writing.